Okay, today I'm gonna to show you how to 3D print this mission control panel. It's something that I wanted to do for my boys, um, something that I thought would be fun, interactive, and cool for them, um, something that we could learn to do together. None of us have ever 3D printed anything. We've done very minimal soldering, very little coding in Arduino or Python um, or anything like that. You know, some very basic CAD knowledge, um, not in Fusion 360 um, from my work, um, but just nothing like this. But we like learning new things. So we decided to go ahead and give it a shot. And even though it took a lot of trial and error, uh, we're pretty happy with the result. So I was very heavily influenced by this Make article, How to Build a Mission Control Desk. Uh, this guy, Jeff, does, just a, does a fantastic job with the tools that he has. Um, I don't really have a lot of this equipment. I don't have a lot of this uh, professional um, carpentry equipment. So I decided to use what I did have, which was a 3D printer. I wanted something a little bit smaller as well something that would fit on my boy's existing desk. And I knew that I wanted to get involved with uh, designing an AutoCAD in Fusion 360. So here we are in Fusion 360. It's, it's really a user-friendly program. There's a lot of videos and tutorials that you can find online. We had to do a lot of work in here. We had to sketch everything up. Um, we had to design all the, the um, holes for all the buttons and switches. Everything had to be measured using uh, millimeter calipers. We had to develop a bracing system in the back. Uh, to hold everything in place, we had to decide how we were going to print the text out, whether the text was going to go on top, inside, if we were going to just fill in the text, color in the text. We had to have a cutout for the subwoofer, for the, uh, for the electrical cable to come out the back. Um, so there was quite a lot of planning involved in getting this to work. So using your slicing program like Ultimaker Kira here, um, which I used for my Ender 5 Pro, um, just a couple things that you want to do. You need to get your text and your body of the control panel separate. Um, you're going to export those as STLs separately from your uh, Fusion 360 program. And then you're going to group them together as a single object so that you can align them perfectly in the center of the build platform. Um, once you do that, um, you can then separate them again and then just um, slice one portion at a time. So here I'm going to slice the text first. I'm going to slice the text using my, my text settings, which took a lot of dialing in to prevent any stringing. Um, we're going to slice that file, and then we will just hit undo um, to go back to where we were, then remove the text, then we have the body with the um, text insert um, engraved kind of into it. We slice that, and then we'll um, go ahead and print that out as well um, on top of the text. So here's all the settings. Um, it took a lot, a lot of dialing in to get this to work, um, especially with the text. You have to print extremely slowly. This is the body that we're showing right now. Now I'm gonna show you the, the text here, the text settings that I used. Um, you gotta print very, very slowly. Uh, so coming up here, I think you'll see that we're printing uh, the speed is 20 millimeters per second, I believe is the units. Um, and it just, it's gonna be something that you have to figure out kind of on your own what's gonna work best for you. We started with a regular magnetic build platform. Um, that was okay, and you can see here, this is the, some of the early prints that had a lot of stringing. Um, but then we eventually ended up switching to a glass bed. The glass bed ends up giving you a much, much smoother finish on the control panels, as you can see here in this next picture. Um, the magnetic build plate kind of gives you more of a rough finish. Um, so this is a project that was really fun to do with my sons, and they helped me out a lot with it but not as much as I, as I hoped. <laughs> the most complicated piece to print here was the, um, the display. Um, we're gonna have these LED lights light up to show different statuses of the, um, of the ship. So we had to do kind of like a transparency layer. This is just white PLA that printed on top of the text. Um, and then we had to design these light boxes. Um, the light boxes were gonna house the LED, um, but not be so constrictive that you won't, like it's gonna cast a shadow or there's just gonna be basically like a small um, circle showing up from the LED. We want to see the whole box kind of light up here. Uh, and a shout out to Adafruit because they, they really have um, make, made it easy um, to, to get all these boards and to program these boards and the libraries that they have for Arduino um, make everything much, much, much easier than it would otherwise be. Um, so if you're OCD, you're going to want to close your eyes for this because I gave up on cable management um, about uh, three quarters of the way through the project, but there's definitely a lot of soldering to get this done. Um, that was the um, Arduino before. This is the Raspberry Pi that you're seeing here. Uh, but in the end, you end up with um, you know something that wasn't too terrible to program um, and, and works really well. Uh, Arduino is um, 
coded in C and um, it, was, it was kind of a lot of code and my code I'm sure is extremely messy because I don't know how to code, but it works. It definitely took some, some trial and error, but it works. The Arduino sends um, um, signals to the Raspberry Pi um, over a um, USB cable and the Raspberry Pi is what kind of plays back all the audio um, once it's commanded to by the Arduino. Hey guys, today I am going to show you how to drive this rocket. In case you can't find it on the stores, it's because we need this. I'm just going to give you a few tips about it. There's a bunch of things you can do with this rocket. Like, say your waist is full, but mine's not really. You turn on the waist up. Then you turn it up. And your waist will be not full anymore. And like, so if you want to steer the direction of the spaceship, you can use this handle right here and to go like that. You see my pitch is moving up and then it stops. And it's moving down and then it stops. It's moving up and then it stops. And then there's like a bunch of different things you can put it with. My favorite one is the INT lights. To get the spaceship to launch, we have to turn on the pumps and turn the O2 flow a little bit high, about three, uh, well, four up and, f and four down. So, like, you want it about that high. And you want to wait for this to fill up. You do not want to press. Um, you don't want to get the flow to this, these two right there, or else it would turn on the master alarm. Another way to turn on the master alarm, if you turn your O2 flow too high, it goes on. But if I turn it down, it's not. Oh my gosh, the O2 fans and instruments. But see, I told you, it's going up too much. We need to go down a little and turn this down a little bit. Also. And turn on the pumps at the same time. And then we'll go for launch. To head back into the earth, we have to turn down our impedance and our current. Okay, stand by 13, we're looking at it. 
So thanks for watching the video. I hope that it inspires you to tackle a project of this scope, even if you aren't really familiar with the uh, procedures, the techniques, the coding languages. I hope it inspires you to learn something new. Um, if you leave me some comments, um, and if there's enough interest, I'm definitely open to posting the STL files, the Arduino code, the Python code, and just to answer some general questions on how it's done. Thanks again for watching.